Do you know how powerful you are? Welcome to Rise Urban Nation. Welcome everybody to Rise Urban Nation. Reshaping and elevating your mindset to help you achieve what you believe. Sometimes we don't even see our own greatness. You can't be what you can't see. And connecting black cultures to build a community of talent and success. Black people need to realize that they are assets. You are an asset. When we rise, you rise. Come together as a group. This is Rise Urban Nation with Terrell Simmons. Testing one, two, three. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. This is the closeout episode for season one. I want to thank you so much for rocking with us throughout the year. So appreciative of what you've done to really accelerate this podcast. I got so many amazing things happening in the new year that we're going to bring you. In this episode, I'm just reflecting with my business partner and dear friend, Shola, to kind of go through the year. You know, our, our personal ups and growth and downs and everything in between and our personal life, professional and in business. So thankful for, you know, my whole staff who's helped make this happen. Special shout out to my engineer, Tony, who makes everything happen behind the scenes. You, you probably won't hear his name, but you 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 hear his work every day in the intro music and the, the quality of the sound of this podcast. Oh, it all to him and then all the countless others that I mentioned in the episode that have helped make this happen. So just had to get that off and running. If I didn't mention this, there is going to be a special discount code. And we're going to talk more about Taylor Brands as we go through the year. Um, it's who we've used to establish our logo, our brand, even to go through rebranding this year. And there is a special promotion Taylor Brands has that I'm going to drop in the link that is good till January. So make sure that you take advantage of it while it can. It's a discount code that I'm giving especially to you. So when you go visit Taylor Brands, T-A-I-L-O-R brands.com to visit Visit them to, to build your business, everything from building the logo, starting your LLC, building your website, everything you need for you as a side hustle entrepreneur, aspiring entrepreneur is there until mid-January. Use Terrell50, that's T-A-R-Y-E-L-L 50. It's a 50% discount code that's till mid of January. So use that code and get your hot side hustle, your startup on. And then in the new year, we're going to be rolling out some little master classes to kind of help you do that and refine that idea and turn it into a business. So without further ado, uh, let me start the episode and hope you enjoy it. Thank you for another great season and look forward to what the new year is going to bring us. All right. All right. So this is going to be a free flowing conversation. Welcome everybody to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. Got a uh, the one, the only, the magnificent, my business partner, um, extraordinary venture capitalist, world traveler, startup coach. What what else do you have on the resume? I, I well, feel I was like actually an angel investor. Angel yes, investor. I, I did try to be a VC, but I, I realized that it would have been, it's better for me, for the community I was trying to serve, to be an uh-huh. angel investor. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and mom, I'm a mom too. And, and your mom you know? too. Big shout out yeah, to mom. Yeah, crazy sister. <laughs> <laughs> Big your crazy out baby to sister. <laughs> for bringing such yeah. a wonderful human being into the world and yeah. her being a, a, a shining light as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, man, we've finished up a full year of Rise Urban Nation, formerly known as Rise Panoras. And we've had one heck of a ride. And we are still going. We are not done. We have so much to do in 2022, and we can't wait to bring it to you. I think I just rhymed there. Did I? Was that? Yeah, man, you're in a roll, man. (laughs) (laughs) You've been churning this out, but you're about to take my job from me, man. Come on. (laughs) We we got a a special episode that we're going to have coming out, um, you know, at the top of this year where we had a strategy session with um, uh, another business partner who's coming along with us for equity, diversity, inclusion, and uh, corporate social responsibilities. So when you hear us talk about EDI, CSR, 
that's what we mean and we're going to come and we're going to be working with a whole lot of people to do that I, i'm gonna just say this is what this is a, a little brainchild that i dumped in the, the last strategy session and shola knows it uh or where I talked about running the receipts. So run the receipts. And there was a whole lot of companies, right, Shola, that was talking about Black yeah. Lives Matter and uh, corporate support, social and they're going to do something. Yeah. And it's like, you're throwing so much money at it. And I'm like, okay, throwing money at it. What exactly is the problem that you're, you're tackling, you know, and things like that. So some, some had good examples of exactly what they were going to do that would help uh-huh. the problem uh-huh. some just threw money at a pr like made a pr stunt yeah so that's 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 where we we we're, we're trying to figure out we're going to brainstorm of how we're going to do this but we're going to ask everybody to run the receipts in 2022 we want to see the receipts and if you haven't if you don't got your receipts don't worry we'll work with you but you know i like to speak things to it into existence what's some things you would like to see in, before we do our reflection episode in, in 2022 with run the receipts Oh, well, run the receipts. It's not just about declaring that you have a budget set aside, but that there are programs and initiatives that you have. Either you plugged into something or you've developed something. I think right now there are um, there's enough uh, you know, going on. And this is not just um, in the U.S. alone. It's on a global scale mm-hmm. where you can really help um, bridge a gap, right? In mm-hmm. so many ways, you know, you can you can touch on education, you can touch on healthcare, you can touch on um, on family, you can touch on um, you know ownership. So many things, entrepreneurship, um, innovation, you know, culture, history, fixing like the omissions of history is usually a, is a good. That's a something that some some probably might not be mm-hmm. brave enough to touch it, but that would be a good place to go. Dang. You know, and then like there's so much that can be done now with especially with companies that are wealthy enough to literally take care of a whole continent you know in essence you know it's, this is not we're now in an age where the amount of wealth that's circulating around the few can literally feed everybody on this planet so you know we have a situation where what i want to see is not just talking about it or declaring something but being about it right mm-hmm. and putting things in place that are going to be sustainable not something that if, for instance, there's a change of hands in your company, it stops. Something mm-hmm. that no one can change that will keep on living and breathing, you know, to make sure that, you know, the world literally essentially can be a better place. Yeah, and I, I love seeing that because it's all about co-creation. And the more we co-create, build together, the more innovation, the more building, the more better products, which just makes for better dollars. And if and if it makes dollars, it got to make sense, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it does. I mean, I love that you even talked about innovation. I think this is the thing that's the issue, the systemic, intentional, oppressive way that groups of people have lived on this planet, mm-hmm. despite their contributions to where we are in tech and where we are in advancements, you know, in human history. Yeah. And even, and I, and I think also the fact that so much has been omitted from us that had civilizations even before civilization was written down in a different language, mm-hmm. right? So I think like there's there's so much to be done that start fixing you know what the, the, the major problems that we have today. These are problems that were created. That's something that actually needs to be understood first. And mm-hmm. if it was created, it means it can be fixed. You yeah. know, it's yes, it might seem like a massive mountain now, but you know. It's just, let's go back to this guy's song, you know, Burner Boy, you know, we're, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the world is the monster you've made. Like, you know, if a group is mm-hmm. doing something that you don't want, you've created that, you know, mm-hmm. and if you've created that, you know, it means that you can unlearn and undo a lot of the wrongs that have been done in the past. So that's like the whole thing, we're calling on humanity now to do the right thing, essentially. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, something. Um, I can't remember which educator I got it from, but the, they were saying, you know, here's the good thing about racism. Racism is learned. No, no, no child comes out of the womb racist it, it, with racist mm. tendencies and mm. thoughts. So mm. if racism can be learned, it could be unlearned. So I, I love that you, um, you know, tied that into your answer. All right. So let's let's jump into reflections. You know, there's so much for us to reflect on in a year. You know, let's break it down like this. I want to break it down to personal reflections, mm. professional reflections mm. from both me and you from growing. And when I say professional, like 
Adeshola Akindele, the brand, the businesswoman, like <laughs> reflections, and then reflections on run mm. as we, we went through the year building this this beautiful thing that has taken a life of its own. So let, let's start, let's start there. So give me the reflections in whatever order you want to give them. So we got mm. Mm. Personal, okay, yeah, well, I'm gonna run. start as a per- personal and I'll start with myself. So, you know, as you know, bro, I'm always on this self awareness journey, learning more about myself. And the more you learn about it yourself, the easier it is to live with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the truth, <laughs> you know. I found myself like I, I laugh, yeah, but before my laugh wasn't really authentic. Uh-huh. So, when I laugh now, I'm like, I'm really. <laughs> 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 It's really coming from a good place. It's seriously like I've never felt so much peace. And that is because, you know, I have unpeeled more like layers of my onion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the ones I don't need, I'm happy to let go because, you know, that thing about having some kind of traumatic like um, past is like you hold on to everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're like something stinks in here, but you're not really sure what it is because everything is all in the same. <laughs> same part (laughs) so you know i'm grateful that because of the way because of the kind of company i'm building we've given we've been able to give each other time to pause and in that time i've just said that instead of you know my mind is always racing so i had to look for something that would stop me from doing that and (laughs) it's Mm -hmm. nothing better than trying working on yourself so um what i did you know essentially I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm still I'm still working on on in so many so many areas, but I'm a happier person every time I do face myself, right? Mm-hmm. Um and because of it, I'm able to step away, step back and my ego is like diminishing so much so that I can let people in, right? Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why I think like this year see that our relationship really, you know, grew because you you not only did you take the time to understand me and all of that, you could see behind, you know, you could see how hard I was trying to work on myself as well as a person. Mm-hmm. And you were there to support, especially those, you know, I had some tough calls this year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, man, I gotta call my brother because I didn't want to handle this one. And that's so great because you know something? I'm I'm funny enough as a person, I'm a very feminine person in my mind. But when you see me, it doesn't look like that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I can come off aggressive, you know, um, I'm very tenacious and ambitious and all that kind of stuff that might be manly energy. But you know, it's very hard for me to have a relationship of, of mostly any kind with a, a dude because a lot of them get intimidated, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, okay, what am I going to do? I think you're like maybe probably the third person in this in this world that that can stand around me beside me you know you know or <laughs> wait <laughs> most important one actually ahead <laughs> that's what I, have. I, have to do. I finally let happen and i have got two brothers right so you know it's it's I'm, maybe because i was the first born or something right. but essentially for me personally i've evolved in that space you know where i can have a healthy relationship you know with someone like yourself with you know, with other people and i can actually value how my relationships um, intertwine in my life, which is very important. Also, personally, you know, I've, I've learned to set better boundaries, especially with family members, something that is so hard to do ra- being raised Nigerian, you know, yeah. or African in, in, in essence. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm standing by them. I mean, I, I giggle now when I'm like, man, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, I will try. But before I used to let, like, you know, it's hard being the firstborn. You, you're, you're soaked with so much responsibility that you didn't even ask for. Yeah. Um, but now I'm like, no, no. Like, for instance, you know, bro, you know, I'm on this, that minute journey. And the part I'm in was generational wealth. And I just realized something. My generational wealth is about me and my legacy, my child. Mm -hmm. You know, I realized it had nothing to do with my my extended family unit. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was trying to carry that. In fact, I realized that I've been trying I've been trying to carry that for all my life. Mm -hmm. This year, I had to let that cloak go. That was like the the, the best thing I could do for myself and the healthiest thing I could do for myself. And I'm going to be 40 next, you know, this coming year. So it was, I'm so happy that this next decade, Mm -hmm. I have a a lighter way of being, you know, as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, just so many, I mean, there are so many awakening moments here. I can't, if I, if I, if I try to talk about all of them, I wouldn't even get to my next point professionally. So like, you know, so personally, that was it. As a mom too, you know, there was a lot of evolution there because I had to, I, I didn't want to repeat the traumatic parenting style that I experienced. So yeah. I had to ask for help. And mm-hmm. that's another thing I realized. If you if you find yourself banging on a wall, 
it's not because there's no solution. You just haven't asked for help or gotten the right help. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, that's what I realized I had grown. But for me to ask for help for something so personal, to really, you know, to actually go for parenting, you know, classes, therapy, you know, even put my child in therapy. Because the one thing I don't want is for my child to be damaged in any kind of way by something yeah. I had done. Yeah. You know, or so I had to go and learn that I'm reading books like a crazy person, you know, and things like that. Um, and then now getting to this is our last year of homeschool, you know. Mm -hmm. So I I also feel some kind of um, anxiety a little bit about you know she's going to go back to normal school now, you know, start a new era of her life with that, which you know the same support. But I realize health yeah. healthy wise, mental health wise, uh -huh. she needs that. I need that. You know, I need that. We need that space now, um, so that she can become who she's supposed to become. Really, and, and and that independence that I have kind of like taught her, she can now start expressing it on her own and making decisions on her own, you know, which which is which I think is very hard for any parent. But this is, you know, I think I've done a good job enough for my daughter to be fine fine out there. Yeah. Um, professionally, bro. Well, I'm gonna start. Wait, 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 wait. So before you yeah. want to, because there's a lot of things I want to unpack from that. So <laughs> that that may go over some people's head, and then I want to I, I want to reflect in the same vein um, with okay, you, so cool. we could be reflecting together. Oh, um, awesome from the personal standpoint of view, because I, I, a lot of this I, I resonate with too. So, and one, thank you so mm -hmm. much for just allowing me to be a part of your journey. And I'm, a, I'm so appreciative um, that we have met and then we've, we've gotten to connect in this, in this way. Um, and I too have learned through our relationships and through, you know, all the equity, diversity, inclusion work that I've done, how, I already knew that women had a, had a tough time in the in the corporate and entrepreneurship in the the VC sector, raising funds, all that stuff. And I think from just being around you and other just courageous, amazing women, I I, I learned how much even how much harder it is for a, a woman of color to even go through this. Like the the you know the 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 fact that you have to, not that you don't have to, but to to survive and to thrive sometimes in some of these very male egocentric spaces, it takes some masculine energy to get what you need to get. And it, and it sometimes it, it's compounded with, you know, trauma and mental health. Right. And so yeah. um yeah. And that's not healthy. And and I think there is space for feminine energy in business. And sometimes it's needed more so than the masculine energy in business and knowing how to, you know, coexist with both of those spaces to make a more well-balanced approach when it comes to business is, is what we're really searching for. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I appreciate you allowing me to, to be, a part of this journey with you and learn from you and grow with you as well. One thing that I, I, I want to know too, cause like, you know, as me growing up part Nigerian too, and trying to find a different way from how we grew up, not to say that our parents didn't do a good job. They did a great, they did an excellent job of what they had and what yeah. they knew. Right. Yeah. But now, yeah. we, you know, the, the goal is as you go through each generation is to get better. Right. And, and so mm -hmm. now that we mm -hmm. know better, we can do better. Right. So they did great with what they had. So now we want to position ourselves so we can be out here healing and growing and mm -hmm. talking about mental health that we didn't get a chance to talk to in that past generation. And they don't quite understand oh. that, that, that that's growth. That's, that's betterment. And, and some of them do, some of them don't, some, but that's what we're giving to the next generation. And hopefully they can take the baton and take it further than what we went through. Um, I often say that we're standing on the heels and the backs of all the ancestors before us. Our ancestors are, you know, even though they may not say it or, or our elders sometimes may say it publicly, but they're, we are who they prayed for and who they yes. wish they could be, could have been. Yes. Yes. And sometimes when they see us going into the unknown and taking those risks and talking about, well, they get scared for us because they're, yeah. they're stuck with the traumas that was caused yeah. from them tapping their toe in the water. Right. And so when we jump in, it's like, Oh my gosh, they, all the traumas <laughs> come out for them. <laughs> and so they, they're trying to save us, but we're, we're trying to save say yeah. we're, we're mm -hmm. not we're not trying to say we're not just trying to survive no we're trying to thrive so we're like forget mm -hmm. this <laughs> <laughs> that's it like, like literally forget this yeah. that's literally it oh my god you're giving me like so many vibes t like you know tear vibes but i'm gonna let you like you know complete this uh thought that you're saying because it's it's so important for people to understand 
Right. And then what I realized in my personal journey, how important mental health is, right? Mm-hmm. Mental health is so important. Like coming out of the George Floyd era, uh, you know, my mental health went down for a little bit. And then I did some more self-care, got it back up to where it needed to be, and then got back down again, you know, through mm-hmm. all of the stuff that we've seen in the pandemic and the ups and downs and, and the woes. And that is always a constant to thrive because I, I, I realized and the work that we do, it's hard to to be of service to others when your cup is on empty. You can't serve on an empty mm-hmm. cup. So you have to fill yourself mm-hmm. up first before you can go pour into others. And so mm-hmm. I have to keep reminding myself that because I'm a big energy guy. And <laughs> I was reminded that when my sister-in-law, she had, she makes these little bracelets. And this mm-hmm. is like the little bracelets she made. And she oh, gives you a series God. of questions. And she... um I don't know if you can see that. I can see it. Yeah, it's really pretty. Oh, that blue that looks good on you. There. And so there's What's that a... E energy. Yeah. yeah. So that's the word because she, you, she asked you a series of questions and, and you, 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 what word comes to mind and then what came to mind and what kept coming up was energy for me. So in the leadership development training called Rye, uh, Rye San Diego that I did three years ago, my word was energy. Because they always say every every year you choose a word and that word is going to be the focal point of what. And so that year was energy because like I was known as the energy guy. I can change the room with my energy. I I had so much energy that I can, you know, really shift a, a organization or, or like so forth. And so yeah. when my energy was a little bit off this year, I realized, you know, I was letting other people take my energy in, mm. in, in the corporate world and, and then drain it. Right. And I had to reclaim back my energy this year so that I can mm. I can shift the energy and shift, bring my own energy and shift the energy to the way that I wanted the things to show up mm. and go into my life. So I'm reclaiming energy back in 2022 and we're going to use that energy to change the world. So yeah. uh, that's, that's my <laughs> personal growth. But go ahead. I, I know you had some some thoughts on my reflections. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Like, you know, what I love about, you know, you that you're quite, you're very, you're not just self-aware, you're socially aware. So, you know, it's, it's part of the, uh, what's it called? EQ journey, you know, emotional intelligence journey someone has to take. So for me, self-awareness was the most important thing. I wasn't self-aware, so I wasn't able to autocorrect myself you know in most situations i was literally living on defense and when i look back at my life i i felt like i didn't li- i wasn't the one living it like i was watching a film or something mm-hmm. you know the last but the last couple of years in my life i've been present i've been there i can act actively say and state what my state of mind was you know at certain points Compared to like, you know, the first 30 years of my life where I felt like somebody else was driving the the ship. I'm really grateful that it was in my 30s that I realized that something had to give, something had to change because, you know, I mean, I know I'm, I know I'm a brilliant person, you know, I know I can, I can match the energy in any room uh, when it comes to doing, you know, getting things done, solution. I could, you know, I've done a lot in my life too, but for the fact that someone has to remind me of what I've done, you know, before I turned 30, that was scary. Also, I saw it affecting my being a mom. I wasn't really present, you know, in terms of my kid. I would only see how far we've come together in pictures. That was scary as well. And that's not good for a child. Mm. You know, with mm. you, I noticed how you would always make something, no matter what the situation, you always find. It wasn't about finding a solution for you. It was about knowing how the two people in that situation were. Right. And mm-hmm. how you can make things move forward together for both, mm-hmm. you know, some like the way the world is so divisive now, it's thing is that kind of leadership we need. Right. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. this is what I love about, you know, you're just an, an excellent leader in the sense where it, 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 you are able to like, okay, I'm going to use the worst example this year, <laughs> like in terms of pol- pol- political divide. Yeah. Right. You're the kind of person that you can sit with a conservative and you can sit with, you know, a liberal and you can sit with a Democrat. And you can find a way for all three to move forward Mm -hmm. despite the division. And that's like, that's literally what it all boils down to in essence that, you know, you really are Terrell, like, you know, the, the diversity, equity and inclusion. I'm more about the equity thing because I'm like, look, man, we, we don't own anything, you know, and you're you're you're, you're more like, pay me what I'm worth. Pay me what you owe me already. I got, I got my receipts. Pay me. (laughs) (laughs) 
you know what i'm like that now because i wasn't like that before and it really it harmed me financially i mean i mean i, I found out like this was this year i found out that all these business plans i've been writing business plans for 20 years right <laughs> wait um wait let, let me make sure i check when i left uni i'm 40 now yeah literally for about 20 years i've been writing business plans in fact the app that most people use now i started with them when they were cd rom yeah. and come to find out that the plans that i the plan that i wrote recently uh for a partner someone said hey these plans are worth like 50 grand and i'm like <laughs> i'm bro i almost dropped off my seat because i know how much i was charging for them and i was so mad you know because obviously it's taking me years to be so good at it but it was like i didn't understand i didn't know my value see why does it have to take that long for me to know that you know so those are the kind of things i'm working on as well and helping people work on but back to what i was saying i never felt comfortable with the whole inclusion stuff because in my mind you know i always say bro like i used to tell you i, I know it used to be like you, you used to roll your eyes up but in my mind you i think you're trying to figure out a way to explain it to me that i would get it because i was coming from an equity standpoint i understood the diversity thing because honestly it wasn't until i came to this country that i really felt the effects of of i even i felt black like, I mean, to me, I just thought I'm a human being like you. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that you can do that I cannot do, maybe better. But still, the thing is, I didn't think I was, I didn't see a difference. I didn't, I've never, I've not walked through life feeling different. Mm -hmm. um, and coming to the U.S. to feel that way was very hard. And I, and mentally, I had to figure out a way to, to navigate that mm -hmm. so that it wasn't something that occupied my mind all the time which is easy for me to do because number one, this is not my home. I have mm -hmm. options, but I can only imagine what somebody who does, who feels like, cause it's not that they, you don't have an option. Who feels that they don't have an option would be, it, would, they'll think that this is, this is it. This is my life. There's nothing I can do. I just have to live with this nonsense. Right? So you help me understand mm -hmm. um, equity, you know, uh, sorry, inclusion better. Because to me, I mm -hmm. felt that we've given you enough time for us to be part of what you're doing and you're, you still don't want us to be part of it. So I, I'm, I don't care about you anymore. I'm going to create a pathway for my people. Mm -hmm. And that's like how I felt. And, I, I, and it's funny because the, my name, my name in, 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 in like the compound meaning of my name and my first name and my last name is mm -hmm. literally that. So basically, Adeshala means the crown creates wealth, you know, like mm -hmm. basically my my status, my position, my mind, my brain, everything I'm using to create wealth, right? Which is something I've consistently been doing for people. The others, my last name means warrior returns home, mm -hmm. you know, and I only found that out funny enough this year, you know, because oh, I've wow. always had an issue, you know, yeah, with my last name. So I just decided that, you know what, let me find out what, because I was contemplated or oh, maybe if I should try having a different last name or something, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm weird like that, but, <laughs> but literally, and I, and I said, Oh, that means some, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense because the way I feel here in this country is how many of my brothers and sisters can I take home? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and going back to Nigeria has been a, a massive topic for me in sense where i've been very indecisive of how i was going to do it mm -hmm. i was never sure if i would actually go back and live there but i want to have a part of my life there i mean i wasn't yeah. born there so you know the way i feel is, is somewhat valid but my most successful run in life has been there so it was an no, education your most successful run is run i get it hey <laughs> <laughs> you're like hey you're on a roll <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah, come run sister. come run back home run back come home. Run, yeah come so run we can run home. it up <laughs> but it's not about that you have taught me that it's a balanced game right you know because i've learned so much like as in appreciation of where i come from my roots in the sense where the resources we have on that on that continent the fact that a particular area on my continent could feed the world if it became the world's farm so many things that we're using right now even down to the iphone is thanks to my con you know where i come from and i am as an economist i realize what i'm supposed to do in the sense where the value see the way i devalued myself mm -hmm. is the same way we do that in africa for our resources right understanding like what something is worth is something that's so important there is a reason we were not allowed to have an industrial era if we did we would definitely be china so mm -hmm. it's a it's a situation now where it's like how can what i've learned now i've, I've lived around the world what i've learned now how can i use that to help us across board mm -hmm. and also another thing that's very important i'm not angry i'm angry when things happen yeah. But it's not a perpetual feeling I feel. 
And sometimes I think that that's another thing that I've, you and I are very um, similar in, right? I can mm. I can sense that, like when you mention something, you're mad at that point, like how dare they do that? But <laughs> you're not realizing that that's not going to help you get the solution. That's not going to mm. help you do make any change. So it's this is what I, I think where you and I like really work well together. We are able to to set our emotions aside. Well, for me, it's easy. Just put it aside mm-hmm. and then be like, okay, this bam, 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 what is the outcome, right? And how are we going to do it? And and that's something that I think I really appreciate on a personal side, our collaboration together, our relationship together, because you're making me a better person, right? Mm-hmm. And in turn, I see that you're like, who finally someone that gets it. <laughs> 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 whose brain is working <laughs> you know and i feel that because of the kind of energy that the, both of us have together we're attracting the right people mm-hmm. to be with you know around like not even around us but to really drive what we we're supposed our mission together right and that an example you know obviously jasmine come, coming coming on board that's right. like a, so that was just like a total intensified run in a way where you and I knew something was missing, but we could we weren't sure what it was. And it was funny because when I met Jasmine, it was her energy. Yeah. And I was just thinking something about this girl. I don't know what it is, but I think I have to introduce her to terror. It was just weird. That's how I felt. And then full the, circle, and full was, circle coming back again. Remember, my word is energy. So, you know, only yes! energy will feed into us to bring yes. a full circle to come back home based on, you know, everything that's based upon yes. the meaning of your name. And so her energy brought you, brought her here so you could bring her back home to where she needs to be. <laughs> where she's supposed to be, yes. Literally, see, that's the truth. Um, and see, everything I take in you know, a metaphorically, I don't take it literally. So finding out the meaning of my name, all these things, learning from you and realizing the power of what you do um, has been, you know, ex- exceedingly, uh, has been a lot of like a journey, a learning journey for me because it was what I couldn't reconcile before that you kind of personificate. So I'm really, really like, I, I mean, I can't tell you every time when I think about it and I think about what we're going to achieve, I just, I feel so grateful to just be in your orbit, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, because this is the kind of relationship every human being should aim for. You should Absolutely. be around people who make you better, who know your value, who know your, who be talking about you when you're not there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's funny because Jasmine, you know, Jasmine noticed that, oh, it's so weird. It's so you like talk yourselves up. <laughs> 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 it's so funny, but it's so, it's such a healthy way. And I, I really hope that we can set an example for how people in our community and beyond learn how to work together, yeah. you know, um, and how to work together so things get done and how to keep the relationship positive, clean, you know, um, ev- evolutionary, you know, kind of thing, you know, and, and, and transcend any, th- any issue that, that would make us make people's lives better. I think that's like, you know, something that personally, like, that's like my, when you say hold down reflection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, yeah. and since we're, we're, we're in the, in the, the mood of thankfulness, Thank you to Jasmine for, you know, being the advisor and coming on to the team and really helping us out with a strategy session. Mm. Uh, we got to see her earlier today. Um, also, another teammate of ours, Anne. Thanks, thank, big thank you mm. to Anne, who's holding us down as one of our key people on the on boots on the ground over in Nigeria and uh, bringing us the sweet wahala and everything else you see behind the yeah. scenes uh, as far as interviews. And I, I, I'm going to even go give thanks to Pat past team team members uh big shout out to Hani who was uh, a big when we first started a big key component um in our our social media uh, hold it down our social media you, you you got to see a glimpse of Hani I want to say episode three four I can't remember one of the it, he's in the top 10 of the early episodes uh at Hope. yeah it was a popular Hope. episode actually yeah it you was know? a pretty popular episode so um we I hope we run into him again later on down the line and and then see how that that young man has grown and and probably built an Mm. empire for himself. All right, so let's jump into, so that's a little bit of our personal reflections. Uh, Business. Adesola Akindele, the the CEO, (laughs) the businesswoman, Higer. Where do you want to take it to? Like, what what, what are your reflections? on? on Oh, yeah, business reflections. Well, one thing about business I learned, and this is something that, it's not just a business, not for this year. It's a life journey of mine. So my personality 
kind of entrepreneur I am, I tend to do multiple things at once. Yeah. But it was one time when a coach told me that you're like a massive energy of light. And imagine p- being in a can. Now, if you only punch one hole, all that light goes through the can, right? Yeah, that hole. Yeah. But imagine you're punching holes all over the can. You're 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 messing up the structure of the can and all the light is, you know, seeping off in different points. So this year, what I had to do was take some black tape <laughs> mm-hmm. and start closing all the holes. The funny thing is that closing those is so easy for me to to be part of something new. The thing that people are most scared of, um, I if I find it easy which is why obviously I'm a good startup coach, right? I can help you launch. Mm -hmm. Um, But this year I had to plug holes, right? And these are holes that one of them was really scary because it was my um, bread and butter. So that was where I used, I I mean, it's it's something that I'm naturally good at, um, Mm -hmm. which is developing brands, you know, brand design, you know, being a creative director, Mm -hmm. um, having my own agency has been something that has fed me my child for years. Mm -hmm. And I had to go all into high gear. I had to close. I had to close that road. I had to block that hole. Mm. That was the hardest one. There were other holes that were small. That one. One was a pain. One was a bit sad because um, I had been on this journey with someone for about two years, um, and this was in the cannabis space, as, as you know, because I was trying to this, you know, see how I felt like I was in a good position to assist with equity in that space. Which, mm-hmm. fortunately, fortunately, from my relationship with you, I was able to be part of that. Yeah. Um. You know, in in those panels that I, 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 that um I was in um to really bring um it was funny a diplomatic eye to what social equity is. You know. Yeah. So, however, I couldn't continue with that. And for what high gear is trying to what we're trying to achieve with high gear, mm-hmm. I needed to focus. Right. Mm-hmm. I needed to stop. I needed to close so many doors, you know, and um, the ones that under the ones that could see what high gear was doing and what it was going to do, understood. Mm-hmm. The ones that didn't, I understand. You know, they're so used to being dependent, you know, for, to depend on me for me to leave and to walk. You know, um, must have been painful, but um, I am happier for it. Mm-hmm. I am my mental health is better for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I reached a level of exhaustion this year where, you know, I had to get to a point where I had to take a week break every two months. Um, and by the time it was coming to the end of the year where we take our usual annual break, <laughs> my, like, it was like, I was having like, imagine birds in your head. Yeah. That last week, it was like, they were going, doo, 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 doo. that was literally me last like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, of that 17th. Uh-huh. That was my mind. So if I had a meeting with you, <laughs> that was like three days. I was not myself. I was just gone. Like I was so fried. Right. But you know, it, it 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 was what it was worth it because now we're as of literally as of today we're in our the second part of our um journey with our second patent. Nice. Right. You know, so it's and you know this is a self funded uh, adventure. High gear. The you know the other companies more or less the same, but I'm happy to have these. I call them exits. They are exits, like the one yeah. from my. Um, agency is an exit because you know my partner my, i had a business partner and then somebody else is taking over my the, my seat you know essentially buying me out which is awesome yeah you know and it's not the first exit i've had it's just this was different it was scary yeah because i'm like hey i'm letting go of who, where i earn money from to somewhere that's sucking up money <laughs> <laughs> you know all the time. but fortunately we went from pre-revenue to revenue this year Right. Which was really nice. I mean, you know, but the best thing was knowing what our strengths were as a trio, mm. right? So as you know, um, High Gear is founded by three women. Yeah. You know, we came together to basically solve one high, one global problem, which was hygiene. Mm-hmm. And we found, like, we started in 2019, and we found that the technology that we were working with um, could essentially even help with COVID-19. Yeah. And COVID-19 has created, a, a, it's like a test for us, right, mm. to explore a minimum viable product we we thought we had time but we realized that we actually don't yeah. with the way um climate change is happening we're only going to see more stuff come out mm. and come up right you know i was watching the news today and i saw like so many places are flooded i mean there was a volcanic eruption somewhere mm-hmm. there's just so much going on that is going to breed a new set of diseases that we are not prepared for yeah and you know if we are not vigilant um 
And if we rely on what we're used to, look at what happened with vaccines. You know, we are going to be too late in so many cases. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the mission that we're on is to be proactive in community health Mm -hmm. more than anything. Prevention is better than cure. I I mean, I wish healthcare was focused on preventative measures as opposed to curing when something happens, right? And that's essentially what we we discovered uh, as our company. As a a company, also, we let go of, of a few people. What we had thought was that being vested is so important, you know, when you're working with, when you're, when you're partnered up with someone. And that's something I, I, that's when I realized that I had to let go of my other companies and projects because mm. I wasn't invested anymore. And it wasn't fair on other people for me not to be dependable because I was putting all my energies mm-hmm. into high gear. So that's another thing, you know, you have to be honest with yourself about what you, you know, biting off more than you can chew, having too much on your plate. You need to, you know, I needed to stop that. And I needed to, you know, be responsible and make sure I let people know that, hey, I would disappoint you if I continue on this journey. I need to stop now. Yeah. Um, and that, that's something that I think was the bravest thing I had to do this year, right. uh, more than anything, prof- professionally, that is, you know. So. Well, you know, that's, that's I, it's, it's so funny how some of our answers are still intertwined because one of my things yeah. was also that too, letting go of some things, right? You know, for me, the the part of letting go, uh, although there's some similarities, there's, there's low differences, minor differences of letting go of those things that's just not for you and knowing when to say no to opportunities, right? Because, you know, sometimes as a uh, up and coming entrepreneur, like I, 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 sometimes in certain spaces, I feel like I have to take every opportunity to go prove myself to say, hey, you know what? I, you know, although you know me as an entrepreneur or um, being a, an employee, there's this there's certain aspects to me that could do this as well, too. Right. And so I got to I feel sometimes I got to go out and prove myself um, and, and take on any opportunity that's given to me. But some of those opportunities may not be for you. And knowing to when to align what opportunities that are for you that and you'll know because they'll be in alignment and values and i've learned this lesson long ago when i was in the corporate world too i remember you know leaving a company one time and seeing that you know i was on a track to the upper echelons of upper management but seeing it and in the and it was in the for profit education space knowing that you know, the lifestyle that they were living wasn't the lifestyle I wanted and the values just weren't in line and how they made decisions. Mm-hmm. And so I have to constantly always go against the grain of what I truly value to make decisions that were really based on profit and not people, right? When we could have made decisions that were based on profit and people, but we just so decided mm-hmm. not to make it on people, but just profit alone. And which means, you know, we didn't always treat people the best, right? Mm-hmm. Um you know, once I stepped away from that, I realized it was it was a blessing, right? Because then I got to focus on, okay, what are my true values and what what do I need to be? Who do I need to be? And what do I need to, what type of organizational culture do I need to be in for me to actually to feel good about what I'm doing and to thrive in the work that I want to do um, when, and when I'm in the business, as you say, in the business of doing good and helping others, right? <laughs> and how do I want to show up? And that allowed me to become the best version of myself if the organization had a structure or something set in place that allowed me to stick to my values when I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Wow, that, that's a very powerful thing. I mean, the business of doing good, That I like that you just said that because I want to go into that. Well, too. it's your term. It's your phrase. I just t- I took it yeah, from yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But I, again, you know, turning 40, I, I said to myself, and when I obviously becoming more self-aware and present and taking time out to pause and reflect, uh-huh. bro, I don't feel like, like high gear is like my, that's my unicorn, right? Mm-hmm. That's my, those are my wings beyond high gear. Everything I do after that point has to be helping people. Now, one thing I realized I've learned in life is that don't always say tomorrow I'll do it. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> chief procrastinator here that or <laughs> how do I say reco- recovering procrastinator here <laughs> so I've had to realize that no I have to fig- I had to figure out a way to start what I wanted to achieve now run was one of those gateways which is why I knew that I mean I could easily have cut off everything I couldn't cut off run because I said no Terrell and I our unity is very unique Terrell you have something that is going to help Africans understand what has happened here or what is happening because Africans don't essentially understand racism 
systemic racism. They don't understand that things are actually built up against it because you know we Africans we are overachievers, so we don't even notice those things. If it's if if the road is harder, we even we go harder mm-hmm. <laughs> to get to that other side. But like that, because like a typical African is like that house, I'm gonna get it. They don't see the obstacles. They, they don't care. I don't care. Like I really don't care about obstacles. Like I just don't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't enter my mind that is the reason why I'm not gonna get something. Yeah. You know, and that's probably why borderline some of them end up as criminals. But <laughs> mm-hmm. the thing is, it's just. <laughs> no, you know, you know our people, but it's just a situation where if you're a group of people like that, and that energy, that mindset is needed by your people and us on another part of the world, we need to unite. We need to teach each other. Another thing was, even when I first got here, learning how to work together with African Americans was difficult. I mean, I had, I had, I had struggles, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't like obvious things. There were just behaviors that i noticed which was shocking for me because i'm like you look like me why don't you think like think <laughs> like me <laughs> so i just realized that hey the Af- that african part is gone right. right and that was very painful i said oh my gosh what what would ha- what would someone have had to do to strip you of who you were because that's exactly what happened you were you were you've been naked for f- over 400 years and you don't know what kind of clothing to wear. And what I love about African Americans is that because of that, you created your own culture. It's mm-hmm. completely separate. And that's something I had to also accept. Mm-hmm. That is, is it, and that is the problem a lot of Africans have. They just can't accept it. Mm-hmm. And I see it because I see it even in the parenting style. And mm-hmm. because I'm unlearning all these things, I'm now open to knowing how to work with my brothers and sisters on the other side of the world. Because this mm-hmm. African, African, being African American is not the only, only place we're going to stop, bro. We have the Caribbeans, we have mm-hmm. South America, you know, and we have, you know, our brothers and sisters also in Asia and yeah. the Arab world. So yeah. it's a situation where, okay, if I'm finding difficulty here, <laughs> how am I going to manage elsewhere? Um, so another thing is because you've taught me in a way I can understand, in a language I cannot understand, a typical life of an African American. I mean, when you say show, look, I was also on pathway to prison too. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I was struggling to see it, but I said, no, man, <laughs> show that I was very different when I was younger, mm-hmm. and I appreciated that because when the way we are raised, we're raised to 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 not make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're raised. A typical African has most likely not made a mistake in their life, mm-hmm. and I feel that that has a certain smallish element of fear because you won't try anything new outside what your parents have taught you to do, which is where I'm the maverick. I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my, my family thinks I'm like, that I'm the biggest risk taker ever. Like I have the biggest balls. And like that door that someone said I can't go through, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna open it while, I'm gonna make sure I go through it while you're watching me and break it at right. the same time, you know? And there's nothing you can do about it. So it's like, I've not really always felt at home at home, right. if you know what I mean. But when I see the way African Americans are, they're very daring. But mm-hmm. they've had to be in order to push past boundaries. And it's just, I wish from my point of view of what I see, the amazingness of what I see, my brothers and sisters here can see it too. Yeah. And I say brothers and sisters here because that's what you guys are. You're, cousin, you're my cousins. Well, yes. You we, know, We second um, and third cousins or like yeah, they like to say in the South, exactly. we play cousins. Uh, yeah. And this is where like, you know, I really, it's like what you're going to do. I know that's coming in the coming year. I'm really excited for this journey for you. Yeah. Discovering your roots, right? You know, I, I can't um, wait to do that. I can't wait because I, I mean, I'm I'm really praying. I I, I have a feeling that you might you might have you might be Igbo, but I mean, I'm just like okay. I'm really... <laughs> no, because I always say that if I'm going to marry Nigeria, it has to be an Igbo man, or if I'm going to work with Nigeria, it has to be an Igbo dude. But the thing is, I just because you know, you know, I you know, I know a big chunk of people are taking from Yoruba land, but still, uh-uh. you know, it's just to to knowing where you are from knowing who you are is so important see part of the business of me doing good is not just about equity ownership it's about helping you know my cousins here identify that because Mm -hmm. something has been stolen you you know you were stolen and something was also stolen from you Mm -hmm. so that if anyone wants to so let, let, let me put it this way if you're looking at how you're going to really help our community it's about fixing that 
-hmm. It's about the culture you stole, the misinformation you've given, the decimation of our, of our civilizations, mm -hmm. the lack of um, acknowledgement that we had been moving forward technologically advanced before, you know, colonization happened. The fact that a lot of what we had developed, even till today, some people cannot do. Mm -hmm. The fact that a lot of our technologies have, have been, were the starting point of how the Western world lives today. Mm -hmm. That acknowledgement is a start. It's not a sorry that's needed. Nah. It's the acknowledgement of our contribution to humanity's progress. And I believe that it's there that even those that are still clinging so hard to their bias and hatefulness, mm -hmm. that would change. Because that means some, a lot of things in your house you should throw away if you, if you hate us that much. Mm -hmm. you know so those are the kind of that's why we focus on innovation and people are wondering why are we so sad because that is where it all started from nah. you know if we even go down to science there's been so many hidden facts about our genome in, you know as you know the originals as well that a lot of people don't understand a lot of people don't know about some of the vaccines and medicines that you know that are being used in the western world that someone's dna mm -hmm. <laughs> that you just discovered Terrell yeah is used to re recite to like um what, what's it called to create recreate them yeah 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 you know? and, and it's from a black a black woman yeah a woman a slave and, and and the woman and her family have not received the benefits of that okay. so that. it's you know there's a lot that in order for us to thrive and this is a, this is another thing that I've learned from from you Terrell about diversity I knew that about inclusion so diversity I knew that when different people are on the table you see different sides of a coin mm -hmm. and and that is the most powerful thing you can have if you don't include us when you're doing anything this world cannot move any further than it is already mm -hmm. it just can't if you're not going to include the rest of the world we can't move forward and COVID is a very good example. Mm -hmm. It will not go until everyone works together. Same mm -hmm. thing with climate change. It will not stop until everybody is on the table. Mm -hmm. Everyone. So that means there's no room for racism. There's no room for hatred. Mm -hmm. There's no room for bias. It's not about my people or oh, uh, whatever national uh, nationalism. It, it is not going to work. We will mm -hmm. all burn, literally, if we don't learn to work together. Yeah, so true, so true. You know, when I think about the early days of, you know, when we started running, we'll get into our run reflections. We'll let, let this be the segue into that. You know, my my thought was, you know, man, you know, you know, black people, uh, one, we don't know our culture. Like, like I had gone to learn my culture by, you know, being raised by uh, my, my stepdad, who I consider my dad, who's a Nigerian man, Yoruba man. I know, I know you, 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 you don't want me to be Igbo, but I, I'm going to claim Yoruba until otherwise told. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just your countenance, the way you are, and then the way you are, like really with women, kind of thing. And no disrespect to, to your bad men, but you know, it's just something I've admired a lot about that tribe. Yeah. That you know, I really see a lot of it in you, kind of thing. So you know, but no, don't just as again, no disrespect to my, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, then, and then, so in my my own journey, like you know, I I realized that that we as black people, even even like adults, um, and even some uh Africans, there's limiting beliefs on what we believe, what we could do, what we could be, and so forth. Uh, and then when I started uh, to see more people doing amazing things and learn about the history of our our people doing amazing things, I said, you know, we need to really. I like this. And then so that's for the listeners who don't know, that's really the premise of why this podcast started. You know, as a as a young kid growing up in Washington, DC, you know, I had I, my 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 stepdad, my dad uh was all about education, right? If you, anybody knows, you know, uh Nigerian parents, they were all about education. So they you know, it wasn't like um I had a a terrible upbringing, but growing up in a, in a certain environment, growing up in the hood, and then also, huh. you know, getting stuck in the the pr school to prison pipeline, where you know the the teachers when they will quickly label you with things like ADD and tell them, tell you that you're not slow or you won't amount to anything or, or you need to go to the slow class, and then you know I'm a kid who's very active, right, and I'm I'm witty and I'm creative and 
they don't know how to teach those kind of kids, right? So they 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 do other things to to push them along or try to push them out, and it became one of those things where if I, I weren't intercepted by the, the right mentorship or people who came into my life, I, I could have quickly went down the, this path that was pre-prepared for every kid that they don't know how to deal with, and they they push into you know this pathway that 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 makes you feel like, all right, well, my life is not going to be anything but this. So I might as well, you know, just accept it. And, or they, you don't get the education of the things that we learn now, you know, what you could be or what you're going to do. That's why you have so many kids growing up and they look at pop culture or whatever. And they're like, Oh, my only way out the hood is I'm a, I have to be good at sports or I have to, if I want to get a scholarship, I got to do this, you know? And, and so that's where like black kids don't connect with, you know, uh, immigrant kids when it's like engineering and all that. It's like, no, you can't be an engineer. Like, there's only five spots for black engineers, and the, there's more spots to go do basketball or be a rapper or entertainer. <laughs> what are you talking about? This engineering doctor and so forth, right? And <laughs> uh, and so, uh, with that being said, um, you know, I'm glad that we we've connected on this journey, and you really resonated with you know, how I saw we can connect and, and, and build a new path, a new era and, and really share these stories. So, you know, outborn, we know run started as this podcast thing, but you know, what, now that you're reflecting and we're reflecting together, what do you see run now? Like, like we know what, what are your reflections of, of what you've seen happen and run this year and where do you see run going? So <laughs> it's very funny. It was actually the better we work together, the more I knew we could do, right? The more I realized that things I had envisioned for Pan-Africans was going to happen because I've met different people saying that they're doing this for Pan-Africans, but they are, they're, they are doing it within their own limitations. And in order to really, truly help Pan-Africans, you need to, first of all, have traveled around the world, right? And not within a cocoon of military or corporate, right? This is intentionally going around to understand different cultures, different ways of life. Because coming to the US, I've learned that yes, they may look like, you know, you may look like me, but we're, we're how, what our understanding is different. I'm very blessed because not only is it that I have someone like you, bro, that's seen the two sides, my, one of our co-founders, mm -hmm. you know, is half African, she's African American and she's Igbo. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Every time I have an issue, she's like, Shola, you know, that's just not how it's done in America. And, you know, it, she, she, she's like, I know you struggle to, like, bring yourself down <laughs> kind of thing to get it. But don't worry. And that's what I'm here for. She, I see how she has to switch herself, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I actually do already. Like, you know, being British, being Nigerian, I have to switch depending on what situation I'm in. You even even now, mm -hmm. I now have a switch also for American because my accent too, I, you know, I mean, I said, look, man, I'm a chameleon. I've lived everywhere. So I've picked up accents when I was in France. I spoke like with the, even when I was speaking English, I have a French twang uh, behind it kind of thing. So it was, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's like for, for me, working with you more allowed me to see beyond that podcast. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, you know, and I think I mentioned it to you earlier today that I was waiting for us to report rebrand <laughs> <laughs> this, this logo is not fitting what i'm seeing for us <laughs> so i and i and for me when it comes to a brand i always start with the look right the look of it right. the colors i was happy with i knew were there and the only way i could extract what i was feeling was when i went you know when i actually created our background you know the backsplash that now gave me, kept me calm mm -hmm. for a while. I'm like, okay, he can do what he likes with the logo with the microphone, but as long as I have the backsplash there, <laughs> I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. Let me tell you something funny. Like, I'm the kind of person that if I want to do something, I will just do it. But because okay. of the respect I have for my brother, and I understand the way he, so when I, I'm the kind of person that I think something I do. T has to contemplate it. <laughs> you know, like he takes like a couple of days. I think he's getting faster. I think I think he's learned to be our to be, you trust me now. So you're like, okay, I trust your judgment. Just do what you have to do. But you know, the beginning of our journey, he's like, Oh, I need a couple of days to think about that. I'm I'm looking at him thinking, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but again, this is the kind of relationships that we have to build. The respect, mutual respect for one another. You know, bro, you've really taught me a lot. Like anyone that knows me would 
automatically think I may not have respect for men, but that's not the thing. I'm disappointed. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, a, I'm, 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 and I'm still waiting. In fact, that's been the relationship with my dad most of my life. I'm waiting for him to catch up, mm -hmm. right? For him yeah. to get it, for him to see me. And that's like the situation mm -hmm. I took into my, all my relationship, every single one. Sorry, exes. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> at the moment in my life where I had made the decision to be single, to be celibate, was when you came into my life, right? When I was in a cleaner headspace. To not be judgmental mm -hmm. in that sense, right? To not be looking for a savior mm -hmm. in a person, right? And in being that healthy mentally, I, the door was mm -hmm. wide open for the right kind of human being in that masculine space to come into my life. And that's mm -hmm. like something that, that's why, like I remember telling, I was speaking to my mom um, and we're all doing Thanksgiving and we're talking about things we were thankful for. And I said, oh, like, you know, you were one of them because I, I, I now can develop a healthy respect, which means moving forward, I'm going to attract the right kind of masculine characters in my life because I now have a marker. Mm -hmm. I have like, you know, mm -hmm. like I know I have people say, oh, you, you know, you're like my, uh, <laughs> you're like my north on what, like, okay, what, what is it that I'm essentially looking for? Not in a relationship, physical relationship, but in a in relationship that in that manner, because in the mutual respect we have for each mm -hmm. other, that person will have that same mutual respect for me and value me. They won't value me in a way like, how can I use her? But that has been all the case most of the time. It's where, mm. oh my gosh, what can I do with this woman? Oh my goodness, this woman can help me do this. Like the way that, you know, you have seen me, I believe now because I've, I've, I've acted right and checked myself too. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I've passed God's test in a, in a way where I'm like, okay, now you're ready. <laughs> Because, you know, I've never put myself in this, in this position where I would disrespect you. And it's not because, it's not that I want to, it just comes out wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, right. know? You, you know, it's funny, there's been times where me and you have conversations and you say something. And I, I'll tell my, my wife later on, I was like, I was like, when she said it, it sounded like you for a second. <laughs> so, like, you guys are, like, both extensions of me uh, in my life. She she runs the, runs the household. You run the business. And the way you guys both communicate to me are very similar. Because <laughs> you have those strong, independent woman personalities. No, but you're stronger. <laughs> let, let, no, bro, let's not, let's, not get some, let's not get it wrong. Just said, oh, you're actually a very strong, bro, for you to be around those like me. <laughs> and I not want to run the other way. It's lit, man. Come on, no, you have to hold so, your so own. Here's, here's another funny story. <laughs> when when my girl brought me around to uh, mm -hmm. her family the first time, this was the 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 same thing. The family and then all of her, her brother's friends said, "There's like, oh, so you're the one that's with her. We always wanted to, to meet who was the person who was going to be with her." <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. You must That's be a, so a, a very strong, patient oh, person. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's true. You're, you know, but it's like, it's not just patience. It's like you are trustworthy enough for a strong woman to step back. There, <laughs> women of color have this automatic, I have to do it myself kind of feeling. We talked about this the other day about black women, right? This mm -hmm. independence, because for us to trust another human spirit to say, you know what? You've got me. I don't have to worry. Right. Mm -hmm. This is this is why I'm disappointed. A woman chooses who she's going to mm -hmm. be. I mean, okay, well, sorry, let me start again. <laughs> In the past, we didn't have a choice. We're at a point where we have chosen who we are going to be with. We say yes when you when somebody proposes, right? You choose. We say mm -hmm. yes to you, we'll date you with all those yeses. The ultimate yes is that. I believe you are going to be there for me no matter what. You've got my back. You're not going to mm -hmm. hurt me. You're not going to break me. You're not going to use me. You're not going to hit me. You're not, you know, there's so many things uh, going through a woman's mind when she makes a choice to be with a man. Mm -hmm. I wish when I was younger, I was in a position to speak my mind about those things. See, you're the kind of person that can say those things mm -hmm. too. Not every man can hear how you think a woman, a strong woman thinks and stay. And I've, I've learned now that as instead of trying to convince somebody like that, that doesn't want to, that means out of all those things that you have to check, every woman has to check those things. Mm -hmm. There's something there they know they cannot do. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful for every single dude, friendship, you know, romantic, whatever that walked away because it, it's, it was 
not supposed to be the kind of pain I thought I experienced. It was supposed for me to learn that mm. that wasn't for me, you know, mm. and that's like very important for every strong woman out there. The way society has, has, has crafted us is not who we are. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons why society mm -hmm. is where it is today, because we've accepted what somebody else has told us it was supposed to be. The more we release mm -hmm. our chains, the more society can evolve and elevate properly and move forward. Yeah. That's like, and it's, it's, it's like when people are asking about allies, when it comes to gender, it's mm -hmm. people like you that women should look to, you know. And it's very, it's not because you have sisters, it's because of who you are as a person, because I, I have brothers, you know, but I, I would question, you know, <laughs> sometimes that they are women, but it's, it's just, it's just a situation where it's, it's very few, right? Very few. But again, we mm. don't come out of the womb bad, you know, right. these are things you learn. And another thing about right. education is not meeting up with the kind of minds people like us have. You know, being mm. African, yeah, being Af like, the meeting of yeah. the minds that's so yeah, important. It is because you know something, being African, education is so important to the point, bro. As you're finishing school like this, you have a tutor waiting for you. You still have mm. homework from school, and the tutor is going to give you homework. That is standard in every African household, no matter where they are in the world. Alex has tutoring, even though she's homeschooled, mm. she still goes for tutoring. That because mm. if you are not engaged, if education as is now is not going to engage, in, you know. Uh, um, a very an intellectual mind. It's, it's not enough. You have to be giving more information. They have mm -hmm. to like. It's not challenging anymore. It's it's like right now. Education is breeding factory workers. If you're not the parent that is looking hard <laughs> or knows how your kid learns or that your kid is not engaged enough or you don't notice, you're gonna have a problem getting them motivated later on. Like my daughter is so mm -hmm. uber motivated. I'm on my toes. The minute she says something, I'm like, okay, I gotta find a course or something that she can do so she can fix, feed that part quickly. So I can, you know, so that it, she doesn't mm -hmm. um, lose momentum. You know, mm -hmm. that was the kind of parents that I, we had, you know, we had to, I mean, we had to read the whole encyclopedia when we were growing up. <laughs> that would that entertain any mind. So we already had, that's why mm -hmm. when people think, why do I have so much information? When people ask me something, I'm like, oh, I kind of read it when I was younger. <laughs> you know, nah. it, 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 nah. it's, it's, I just feel like there's so much change that has to happen to fit who we are. It's not going to happen yeah. if we're asking for permission from somebody else and permission from yeah. and it's, those that did the oppression in the first place. Yeah, and it's and it and it's I think it has to come for yeah. us. So like the I, I think the solution is within mm. us, right? Mm. Um and and, uh, and we have to look inward mm. to to be able to help ourselves through through this this portion mm. of the solution. Um and, and I think run is a great vehicle for us to do that um and 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 do everything that me and you've been able to do together to learn through each other and oh, to yeah. evolve together oh, yeah. personally professionally and then you know we can recreate that along with the different things and, and partnerships that we build along the way you know um and you know one of the things that i i've grown with you in reference to um uh, run is uh i remember when we used to have these debates about uh black right it's like you're like I, I don't i don't like this term black like i i i, I am not a color like what, what i i know this is a you know a, a american thing but i i am not black i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and i was trying to figure out like look all right black culture is a thing it's the thing that we've created yeah. here because we've it's so disconnected, but I, I, I agree with you, you know, and, and certain aspects of it. But what are we going to do, you know, f to to unite the, the two worlds? And then and that's when we we, we came across Pan-Africanism. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I think it's just a beautiful way to, to unite both worlds from the, the black culture to the African culture and 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 be that intersection. And. Yeah. You know, I remember when when I first read Pan Pan Africanism, you know, um, and I definition. saw the definition, and it was describing as a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between all indigen indigenous and diaspora ethnic groups of African descent, and that's exactly what we we've been trying mm. to do. Um, uh, and then when or or let me say not trying to do that's something that we're going to do let me speak it to in, into existence and that's that we have been doing and, and why pan-africanism you know africa is the most resource rich and land diverse. mass on, on, and diverse on the face of mm. the planet 
the entire global economic system system from capitalism to imperialism depends on exploitation of Africa. Everywhere African people e- exist, no matter where you go, you're going to find African people everywhere. And I, and we know this because the, when you look at the podcast numbers, I was like, man, they got they got Africans there. They got, they got black people there, like places that we didn't even yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> From India to Japan. Like when I was like saw Japan on there once, I was like, wait, we got Africans in Japan? <laughs> of course we do. Come on. So, so liber- liberating Africa oh, yes. yeah. advances the liberation of, the of African yeah. people. And the world so, in, in, in essence, because, you know, like ra- a lot of people, when they think of Africa, they think charity. And that's not the case. Yeah. I think, in fact, the charity that goes to Africa is someone's guilty conscience of the consistent yeah. raping of that continent on so many levels. You know, as an economist... Yeah. You know, I remember my economics teacher is like, why is, why is Nigeria poor? You know, it was funny when he asked me that question. I was like, why is he asking that kind of question? In fact, I only said, studied economics because I wanted to know what was wrong with our country, right? And, mm-hmm. and that question stuck with me. You know, because he asked me that question, I read every single book in the economics section in the library in my, in my school. I went to boarding house. So mm-hmm. because I was trying to find that answer. You know, I studied the EU. That was a special section that I, I focused on, you know, um, when we were uh, doing the economics. I studied Eastern, Eastern Europe because it was the closest thing I would find in books in the Western world mm-hmm. about the situation in Africa, right? And economically. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this, it, 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 it was hard to find a coefficient for corruption, you know, to calculate how, how well our economy could, how, you know, our, our continental economy could do. But I realized how powerful Mm -hmm. we were in terms of resources. But it's like, bro, I know what I'm worth per hour as a consultant. I've allowed Mm -hmm. somebody to tell me how much they'll pay me for years. So I never actually broke that barrier of seven figures. And every Mm -hmm. time I could potentially do so, someone will even reduce my, my pay later. I allowed that. The moment I knew what my value was, I now understood Mm -hmm. what was wrong Pan-Africa wide. You can't tell me mm-hmm. in your currency how much to pay for what's, um, what I created. I will tell you what, I, what it is worth. I'm going to tell you what it is worth to me. You are able to do that. In fact, in, in so many cases, especially now with the way VC and startup space is, you, you, you hear some valuations and you're thinking, mm-hmm. how the hell did you come up with that? Especially when some of you don't even have revenue mm-hmm. or profit. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a situation where I'm like, no, something has to change in essence. Something really needs to to something has to give, but I think it is now time that another set of people or group of people show how it should be done properly, sustainably. Because the way the world is now, this capitalism, this m- form of capitalism is not sustainable. You know, it's not. It, it's something where yeah. we, we really need to, we need to become more conscious as a group, as, a, as, as humans, you know. And mm-hmm. I've realized something as well. If you're not going to jump on the band together, unite together, you know, um, like become a global citizen. If you're not going to be like that, you are most likely going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being afraid about being left behind. It's about you should let go of the fear, let go of anger, right? Let go of any negative emotion and realize how amazing this planet could be if we work together. If we we got to a point where Mm -hmm. the way things were done pre-colonialism, can actually help because mm-hmm. in fact India is an example. India had to go back to the previous way of farming, right? For sustainability reasons. Mm-hmm. Because the, the the futuristic way wasn't working. So they actually went back to what they used to do before they got colonized. That is that I mean that mm-hmm. to me and then also my brother's a farmer. So he was explaining to me a system of farming that we had. Um and it had to do with some kind of like seed exchange between farmers in a you know a region and how they were able to to collectively mm-hmm. come together, literally, which is basically creating a kind of a monopoly, right? Collectively come together and then determine the price yeah. they were going to sell something. So the thing is, I feel run is going to fix the interruption of our evolution, which is exactly what happened, mm-hmm. right? We were interrupted, and despite everything that has happened, still we rise. And this. Despite everything you saw, mm. still we rise, right? 
And this is like the mm -hmm. most important thing, you know, for us. Like this year, I'm what I know you asked me a question and I want to uh, answer it quickly. This year, you said, what and the future of run, what do you see? DI has been a buzzword long enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it now needs to be an action word, you know, and that's where run comes in, you know, where the way mm -hmm. like, like corporate social responsibility and conscious capitalism, these are big things that we feel that run can be heavily anchored in to help not only future companies or companies that are just starting up, but those companies that are that are anchored mm -hmm. in so many places globally, global giving that has to that has to you know take a different form. You know, you just throwing money at it doesn't work. You know, it's a situation where you have to build the infrastructure that you might not even necessarily need to put. You know, you can actually build something where you wouldn't need to put money into it anymore. You know, that residual, you know, uh, form of that residual giving back has can be set up and you can come into any situation and think oh this is what they need no 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 you need to ask the community what they need you need to ask them what they need mm -hmm. right if a community is, you start coming to a community and building new buildings they don't need that no they want a situation where there's certain things that are basic needs that they want they want better schools they want you know um pathways to getting better jobs right you know, there's so many things and more mobility of labor, more mobility inside a company, not being in the same position for 20 years, for goodness sake. You know, so just all these things really matter. And I mm. think this is where run like, you know, especially the three of us who are the, the initial core consultants can bring to the table. That's something I see, not just in just talking about it, but actually being about it. And that's that's like the key, the key thing, you know. Our past, our present, our future. There, there's like a, a, a crossing point right now, mm -hmm. and if we don't fix it, we're just going to be continuously in this cycle of greed, of pain, of trauma, and that needs to end. You know, the world has advanced so much that it's so small. It's so small now. There's no excuse mm -hmm. anymore for one person on this planet to be poor. Really, there really isn't, and that's the yeah. journey also on the high gear side. We decided that it wasn't about profit anymore. It was about being conscious capitalists. It was about being the change we wanted to see and how we were able to get our technology in the hands of those who needed it. In fact, our business model now is specifically designed that way, you know, and this is the example mm -hmm. we want to anchor and pass through Run to help others. You know, Run is big yeah. on diversity, equity, inclusion, but not just about Pan-Africans only because we know we're just... We know that it's we have to all work together. We believe in social equity where everyone benefits, everybody. But not everybody will benefit universally mm -hmm. if there's any group left behind. And diversity is not about just race. It, mm -hmm. it, it encompasses gender. It encompasses um, ability. It encompasses, um, what's it called? It, sexual orientation, you know, religion. So many things. We have to be inclusive. There's something about anyone that's different from you that is going to make your life better. Mm -hmm. There is something about everybody that is different from you. If you look at your set of friends, that should already tell you where your problem lies in the way the world is today, right? If you're not going to say, hey, I've got United Nations going on here in my life, there's an issue, right? And mm -hmm. I grew up in, as part of my life in Africa, I grew up in, in Europe. And in Europe, I, I got to experience so many cultures it was normal. It was normalized. I had to come on. We have to. We have to literally speak three languages. <laughs> being European, you know. So and in Nigeria, it actually in Africa, we have to speak three as well. So we have to speak in Nigeria. I had to learn. I had to know my language, my native, which is Yoruba. Um, English is the first language for everyone. Then, well, most people. Sorry, not everybody. Then, um, then I had to learn French because we were surrounded by francophone countries, and I had to learn another Nigerian language when I was in school. So we had to pick between Hausa and Igbo. I picked Hausa at first in my junior years, and then I picked Igbo in my senior years. So I realized I had an affinity for languages. When I got to England, I had to pick between French, Spanish, and German. So I picked French because I already knew that. I thought, okay, that would be easy. And then when I got to uni, I did German and I did Russian reading. You know, so it, it was mm. odd to me when I got here and people were complaining about Spanish. I'm like, you only want to speak one language? That's so odd. <laughs> that was very odd to me because everywhere I'd been, we spoke multiple languages. Uh, it was normal because you have to, yeah. I mean, how would you, how do you plan to relate to other people if you don't even try and mm -hmm. understand their culture? Then how can you even be enjoying their food 
and still not understand the culture behind the food. Mm. That's so odd to me. I find that very, very odd. You know, even the, the first settlers that yeah. came that came here to dominate this, this uh, continent, you were not all one um, group of people. You were different types of Europeans, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's very odd to me that kind of this... I think that's why a lot of people cling so much to this nationalism here. They've, they've abandoned their other identities mm-hmm. to form something new. You know, it, 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 mm-hmm. and then they're not, they're, they're not interested in hearing anymore by anyone else in the world. That's not going to work. You need allies. You need, to, nah. you need to work. I mean, especially the way the world is now, what we're going through with COVID, if we, it, it's, it's, it's just, this is a community collective effort. And with climate change, it's, nah. it's everyone has to be on board. If one country decides they're not interested and keeps on pumping trash into the air, we're still done for. You know, I, I, like yeah. diversity, equity, and so inclusion true. goes beyond the workplace. Goes beyond a startup. It's about the people yeah. who are investing in the startups. It's about the people who are who have access to the cash. Yeah. It's about the people making decisions. Right. It's about for, you know, for me, the ideal scenario I'll see is everyone represented on the table, everybody. And mm-hmm. if you don't have that, you are not. We're not going to move forward. The world can't move forward if anyone is left behind. Mm-hmm. It just can't. It, we will try as hard as we can. And yeah. all this 1%, you're going to complain. You keep paying for everybody else. It's going to keep happening if you keep leaving people behind. Yeah. Because yeah. when you, when you, if you look at it at the end of the day, um, we should be celebrating yes, all the should. diversity and that it brings to the table. And at the end of the day, it's, it's not, it's, it, 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 you know, it's about one race, yeah, right. saving yeah. one race on this planet. And that's the human race. And since life began in Africa, you know, I, I'm starting there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I really love it. So, bro, do you mind if I share like some CSR trends that I see like picking up over the last couple of years? So, CSR yeah, trends yeah. that you see? Let's save that oh, for the yes, epi- yes, other episode. Actually, actually, sorry. Yeah, we have another episode coming up. You guys are going to love Let's it. save that for the uh, uh, next episode. You <laughs> try to get it to a whole other episode. Sorry, you know, I like to so, talk. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so we next episode we're gonna say yeah. some CSR trends with with, with our, our dear sister Jasmine and, and talk about what 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 should we should look for um and as we begin and continue this work in the future, um. But I feel like you know you gave us a nice wrap up of where we can kind of end here. More to come, and and if you remember anything from this episodes that yeah. still we rise and when yeah. I rise. We you rise, rise they rise we Yay. all rise together so let's continue to rise y'all as far as you know entering your new year for all of you who've been emailing me messaging me whether it be on social media and so forth um about starting your business podcast lo- how we rebranded the logo from the logo as for a trademark and all that stuff we are partnering with Taylor Brands to to help you rise in, in your, your your career, your business, and life. And you can use the discount. Go to Taylor Brands, T-A-I-L-O-R Brands.com and use the Terrell 50 to receive your 50% discount code. That's until mid-January. I'll put that in the show notes. Also, we have merchandise yeah. now, y'all. Y'all been hitting us up for merchandise. Shola has put some merchandise on there. You can see the merchandise on the website, Instagram. Go ahead and get your your your, your oh. Wahala t- sweet Wahala t-shirts, your your Rise Urban Nation t-shirts. And, and then if you got some ideas for it, maybe we'll do a competition later on. Who can we create the best, you know, t-shirt saying and we'll, we'll we'll feature that t-shirt as the next brand or or cap gear or whatever. But go ahead and start checking out. Uh, support Rise Urban Nation by grabbing your T-shirt today. Um, any last words, Shola, for the people before oh, we head no, out? Oh no, nothing, n- nothing at all. I'm really excited. Like uh, for what, every, echoing everything Terrell said, plus how you know we're gonna have our you know webinars coming up. So much more is coming up next year. Sweet Wahala is coming up, guys. So if you've got any funny story uh, that relates to business, you know, or you know, or your career or something that at first it felt like a problem. But it turned out to be a sweet ending, you know. So yeah. wahala means, you know, trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, you know, we use yeah. that as our term we use in Nigeria. So sweet wahala means, oh, wow, it seemed like you were going in the hot water. But eventually, you know, it turned out to be a jacuzzi kind of situation. Um, so, yeah. you know, we're going to kick off. Yeah. The, um, Anne is actually going to be the one coordinating that. 
So, you know, what we've got is the background, everything. So you just record it over there and then we post it. And this is going to be how we launch on TikTok. So I'm really excited. To- oh, yeah. <laughs> we launched on TikTok. So, so, so Anne is going to help us yes, launch the TikTok campaign. Yes. So get ready to see Run on yes. TikTok. So let's run this, run it, up, run it up in the new year. And we will see you um, all throughout mm, 2020, 2022. Let's make yeah. it do what you do. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. Thank you for taking the journey. Be sure to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. And stay connected with Terrell on and off the show. Follow at Rise Urban Nation on all platforms. Do what you love. Love what you do. Don't chase the money. Let the money chase you.